ready when the bridegroom comes. Will you be ready when the bridegroom comes? Will your lungs be trimmed and bright? Beat morning, noon, or night. Will you be ready when the bridegroom comes? Good morning. Let's turn to our hymn book. We take hymn number three, five, six. 356. We would like to appreciate our choir members from the Midlands. But I can see that they are more than from the Midlands. We have recruited other members that are not from the Midlands. And I will leave you to judge those that are not from the Midlands that are part of our choir and orchestra this morning. But they've done a fantastic job. God bless them. Amen. And more especially all these young ones. They play regularly when we have the opportunity to visit our churches in the Midlands. These are their choir and orchestra. They're doing a wonderful job. May the Lord keep them for us. Amen. They gave us much military, part of the orchestration, then the choir, the voice of singing, and then the quintet, the Lord is coming. And they are asking us if we will be ready when he comes. And that's the purpose of our gathering here this um, camp meeting so that um, we can all be ready. Jesus is coming. Sing the glad word. Coming for those he redeemed by his blood. We are taking verses 1, 3, and 4. And we are having a Midlander also to be our song leader for this morning. Brother Ebenezer.
I can see that we are very eager to sing when the roll is called up yonder. We pray that those names that are yet to be on the roll, there will be new addition today in Jesus' name. Amen. So the song before prayers will be 669. 669. When we all get to heaven. Amen. We want to be there. Close and our heads bow down. Ramite will come forward and lead us in prayer. O oh Lord God Almighty, yeah. O oh Lord the Heavenly Father, yeah. our Father who art in heaven, yeah. we come before thee again yeah. for the blessing of the day. Yeah. Lord, pour down your blessing. Yeah. Lord, pour down your blessing. Yeah. Blessing of salvation. Yeah. Blessing of sanctification. Yeah. Blessing of baptism of Holy Spirit. Yeah. Blessing of extra oil. Yeah. Blessing of extra oil. Yeah. Blessing of extra oil. Yeah. So that we can go all the way yeah. to make heaven yeah. in the name of God the Father yeah. and God the Son yeah. and God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. We pray in Jesus' name. We're going to sing a song, hymn number 25. Hymn number 25, how sweet the name of Jesus sounds. We're going to take verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4, which um, Brother Ebenezer will come forward to conduct. Thou sweet name.
Lord has been good to me. I was brought up in the gospel, but as I get older, I went my own way. I thank God for keep bringing me back to the fold. The Lord has seen me through uh, challenges. I praise God. Had it not been for the gospel, I don't know where I would be. I praise the Lord to, that he will keep me and see him to the end. When I was starting, and God still keep me here. And I give glory to God. Last year, uh, my second daughter was supposed to graduate in, ju in July. But she decided not to. She said she wanted to quit. This is the time that you're supposed to write your last exam and to graduate. But she decided to quit. I don't know why. But we started praying. I told uh, some of my brothers in the church. I came here with faith last year. I prayed. I said, God, I don't want this girl to quit. God answered my prayer. In August, she came back to me. She said, Mommy, I decided to finish. Amen. She missed last year graduation. By God's grace, this January, she graduated. Amen. So I give God the glory because God answers prayers. Yes. So at the end of the day, I just want the children of God to pray for me. I want to see Jesus. Turn to thank God for saving my soul, for sanctifying me and baptizing me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Um, I thank God for more than 23 years of victory in the Lord. God has been keeping me. God has been a favor to me all the time. When I'm sick, I kneel down, God will heal me. I got a, a, an experience last year where I was sick and, and I was moving. I couldn't go to work for more than six months. And they did whatever they can do. All the tests they can do, they didn't find anything. But I just shared with the people of God to pray with me. And God healed me completely. So I give God the praise. And I want to see him face to face when I get to heaven. Born into a Christian a home. But the Lord is so merciful so gracious, he's still doing his business, he's still calling his children to his uh, fold. The Lord, one day, faithful day, he called me to come to Apostolic Faith Church, that a woman is waiting for me. Then he told me the power that he has given to Apostolic Faith Church. So I knew this was the right church. As soon as I saw the leaflet where a woman was, uh, 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 our sister was, I knew this is the right church for me. Since then, I never look back. He has healed me. He provides for me. He showed me the way. He's teaching me. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I, I, I feel like shouting. So if, if you don't mind, I just want to say, praise Jesus. He's still in the business. We call him me, I knew, and I know that he's still in the business to call other folk who are not even a Christian, delayed by the sinners, we come here in Jesus' name. So pray for me. I want to thank God for the salvation of my soul. God is wonderful. If I don't stand up and really profess what God has done, I, I am an ungrateful person. God saved my soul. Uh, he brought me in, in miraculous into the apostolic faith because when I, I got saved, I was uh, in, a, in a youth gathering, in a fellowship. So uh, somehow, you know, they, 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 they were, you know, they knew about salvation. But, some, and, but my soul still wanted something, I, but I didn't know what it was. So this young person came to me and just said to me, I think I, I've got an idea, but I don't know what it is. Can you come to this place? So I went to the apostolic faith, uh, you know, and I, when I got there, they, they were preaching about sanctification. Okay, actually, it, it took me time, but I thought, you know, they talked about salvation and then sanctification. I thought to myself, this is something that I may be, that's something that I, I'm really desiring for. You know, I learned about sanctification, God sanctified me, baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. It's been a long journey, and there's been some difficulties, problems. But you know what? God is good. He's given me peace. He's given me joy in this wonderful gospel. I come in and out of this. You know, I, I, I just say to myself, when you started UK camp, I was one of those people. And when I looked at um, the Portland camp, they're talking about the history of, uh, of the apostolic faith here in the UK. And I saw myself as part of it, and I, honestly, I just say, God, it's not me, it is you, and to God be the glory. My desire is to make heaven my home. Saving my soul, 
for sanctifying me and baptizing me with Holy Spirit and fire when I was a teenager. I want to thank God for his grace and favor over my life, over my family, and all that God has been doing for me. Um, I want to thank God especially for keeping me and my siblings and for my first home. Um, last year, my father clocked 70. We were so grateful for keeping him and for helping him start the goals and um, coming to apostolic faith. I remember then that sometimes he, he will flog us for going to church. Sometimes he will stop us from going to church and the people of God will come around to take permission that we have to come for children's practice. We have to attend church. He will grant them with a warning that he, he, they need to bring us back. And for God keeping all of us helping us, some of us are ministers, some are choristers, so what is helping each and every one of us. I thank God for helping all of those to get married in the gospel. And uh, I also want to ask children of God to pray for the first time in over 30 years. Daddy went to camp meeting in Antony Village last year. He didn't get saved. This year is really, really planning to go again. And he has promised that he wants to spend two weeks in camp meeting. I want the children of God to pray that God should please save my father so I want him to see Christ before he sees death. Let's go with me.
name be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that when I was much, much younger than this, the Lord saved me, He sanctified me, and He baptized me with the Holy Spirit. I thank the Lord that as soon as I have Jesus Christ in my life, He began to sort things out in my life. I want to thank God for making me to know this golden way. I want to thank God for the gospel, for this heritage. It's, a lot of people are ignorant of it, but I want to thank the Lord that He made me to know this golden way. May His name be praised in Jesus' name. In this gospel, the Lord married for me, and he blessed me with three wonderful kids who are serving the Lord with us. Amen. May his name be praised in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord has helped me in my place of work. He has done so many things for us. Even when we are sick, the Lord healed us. When we need things, he provided for us. What more can I say? I'm from a polygamous home, but the Lord has made me to have a, ble a wonderful family. May his name be praised in the name of Jesus. Amen. I've not done anything for him, but I want to keep on serving him until when he I want to thank God this morning because uh, I was born in a Christian home but then that didn't make me a Christian but I want to thank God for the godly heritage because from a very young age um, my parents taught me about salvation and I thank God that when we were still children they would emphasize the importance of seeking first the kingdom of God and all the things will be added to us. So I thank God that one of the camp meetings back home, the Lord spoke to my heart, and the Lord saved my soul, and sanctified me and filled me with the Spirit. Uh, I want to thank God especially, because this year has been a challenging year for me, uh, both spiritually and through my marriage, and everything was just, it just went to a point where I say, God, I leave everything into your hands. And I thank God for the people of God who've been praying for me. Uh, I want to thank God that God has started answering prayers. Amen. And I've, you know, when, when I was going to university, it got to a point that I wasn't, uh, I, I couldn't do my schoolwork anymore. It affected me to that point. But I want to thank God that the people of God prayed Amen. for me. And I thank God that I passed the semester. Amen. I thought I was going to fail, but then God Amen. intervened in my situation. Amen. So pray for me so that I will make it to heaven. Amen. Amen.
eternity. Bibles together to the book of St. Matthew, chapter 7. The book of St. Matthew, chapter, 20, chapter 7, verse 24. Verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon that house. And it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. <coughs> 26. And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. We thank God for, co for care meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm really encouraged by the number of testimonies that we have already heard this care meeting of people re-emphasizing the importance of care meeting. Yeah. We have heard and we are seeing evidences of people who prayed last year and they have come back to present their thanks to God this year. Yeah. It is something that emphasizes that we are in the right place. Yeah. We have separated ourselves from the world to come here to build for our eternity. Yeah. We want to look into that this morning. Building for eternity. And like I said, we are in the right place. This is the place that you can come and reflect a bit. This is the time that we want to, as we go through some verses that we have, I want us to get into the reflective mode. We are talking about a, a, quite a serious topic quite a, a, a sobering topic about building for eternity. Right. Um, the definition of eternity from the dictionary just says it's a state to which time has no application. Time, timelessness. Um, it's a concept that is a bit far away from humanity right. when we talk about timelessness. It's something that we are not used to. From the time we are born, obviously we have that, we have our mortal body and that spirit of God that is put within us, which has to go back and pay account of what it has done on this world. But while we are still on this world, time restricts us. Time kind of make us do things in, in different ways. Um, I'm just wondering, have, have people around you, have they tried to maybe look to put their Wi-Fi on and try to open a website and, and it takes ages to, to download? We get frustrated, isn't it? Yeah. Some go even a, to the extreme of punching whatever device that they are holding because of that frustration of it's not downloading quick enough. Yeah. But when we then flip it and talk about timelessness, 
is something that is not easy to comprehend. Um, one other thing that I find it since moving to the Western country is, is, is a bit peculiar is when you are waiting for a train and uh, we, we always whinge and it's running late and all that and usually it's only for five minutes late sometimes, yeah. three minutes late. Uh -huh. We've got to a place where you have to wait for 30 minutes for a train and it hasn't yet arrived, you will appreciate what I'm trying to say is that we are boxed in into a world of getting things quick. We are boxed in into a world of fast food. I don't have anything against fast food. It does help us, isn't it? When we are inconvenienced and we need just a quick McDonald's, you go in there and get your burger and chips, and it does the work. But it, 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 it's, it's a life that we are living in. But we want to talk about timelessness, a state of where time has no application. And the main crucial bit of it is that you can influence where we are going to spend that eternity while we are still on this world. They will get a point where we don't have any ability to influence where we will spend our eternity. It, 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 it's something that can be, like I was saying, humanity tends to look at the now rather than the future. Obviously, there are people who are visionaries who look into the future, but most people just, if I can have today, and that's it. I was reading one sermon by the Wellesley brothers when he was saying he's heard about the, the big wall of China and how beautiful it is. And uh, going to China, you will see the magnificence of what they have built over there. But if you are down here in Wales, Darfur, and you've never been to China, and even if a man can elaborate eloquently how beautiful this, the, the wall of China is, in few minutes it will be like a distant memory. We don't comprehend it. I think that eternity falls into those brackets. When someone tells about eternity, we tend to think, well, it's something that is very far. We can't comprehend anything about it. We can't really reason to the level of man's understanding what exactly is being talked about. But the, 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 I, I was just about to say the cruel thing about it, but rather I would say the fact remains the same that there is a wall of China. Whether you are in Darfur, Wales, or Newtown, or London, there is a wall of China. And if you go there, you will see it. There's nothing about, 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 about fictionalizing that because people have been there and seen it, and it is a reality. Right. Eternity is real. Yeah. And many I can look around have been, been coming to camp meeting almost so many years. Many have called that, have answered that call and have moved to eternity. Yes, it can feel like it's a distant, distant subject, but it's very, very closer oh, yeah. to us. Oh, yeah. We can close our eyes and open them in eternity. All right. very true. We don't have any control over that. Yes. We don't have the ability to say, wait a minute, I need five minutes. No. No. Some go through to this realm of eternity through sicknesses. Some is just sudden death. Some peacefully sleep. Some God give them that inclination of having a feel that the, the, the days are gone now. I need to gather my children and say goodbye to them. I need to say, write some letters, write some wills, and prepare for my house because 
I'm now be ab about to transition to another world. But not all of us, we have those opportunities. That's why I said today, let's reflect. As I, we go through this, I will reflect myself. We have already been posed with a question. Are you ready? Be ready. We heard about the 10 versions and the foolish versions. The demarcation between a wise and a foolish is very minor. Is not massively distinctive. It's just a bit of carelessness there, carelessness there, and you find yourself being a foolish version. By being attentive to the details, you find yourself to be a wise version. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's something that we want us to reflect together this morning. And let's open to the book of Ecclesiastes. It, 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 it's, a, it's a word that I've struggled to pronounce properly, proper, very well. I even went into the, into the internet yesterday to, to check it, how to pronounce it. And, uh, and I don't think I've done good justice to it. Is Ecclesiastes, something like that. Chapter 12, verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. There is no two ways about it. That parting shall happen. Whether it's through the rapture or closing our eyes into the grave. And the Bible tells us the, re the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Then the question then comes, where will you spend your eternity? There are only two destinations. There is a happy eternity and there is a miserable eternity. I'm bringing this background here for, so that when we talk about building for eternity, you know what we are talking about. There are only two ways to happy eternity and to miserable eternity. The book of Revelations kind of give us an insight or into these two destinations. In Revelation chapter 21, I'll read from verse one. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Amen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Amen. And there shall be no more death. Amen. Neither sorrow Amen. nor crying. Amen. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Amen. The Bible also, further down the line, it said, There shall be no no night there for God will be for the son of God will be illuminating all day and let me read five and he that sat upon the throne behold I make things new and he said unto write for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done I'm alpha and omega the beginning and the end I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life Really. That's one happy side of things. Yeah. Where we will live with our Lord forever and ever. 
where we will enjoy the, the presence of our maker, right. where those who have gone through difficulties, if they still have questions for our master, they have the opportunity to have those discussions with him. Yes. But it will be in a joyful environment. Oh, yes. oh, it will be in a brilliant atmosphere. Right. It will be in a, in a, in a place where where, you know, you, you wouldn't say we'll queue up to see Brother Isaac, maybe, if for, he, for, for an appointment. He will, maybe he's got, when you want to see him, you have to, to, to wait while someone is there talking to him. But where there is no time, they, there are no constraints, you, we will all have an opportunity to spend time with our maker. Amen. It's, it, it, it's something that we can look forward to. It's something that we can dream about. It's something that we can encourage one another about. Because he said there will be no pain. For this mortal body has gone through many pains. We hear about sicknesses, all different kinds of sicknesses. Even a small cold. It is painful. Just having your nose blocked. It is not palatable at all. But we are told of a place where he shall wipe away all the tears from our eyes. And there shall be no death. No, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there no pain. For the former things are passed away. Is something that we can put forward in a vision and say, this is my drive for life. Yeah. This is my purpose for life. Yeah. That I want to inherit this city, Amen. New Jerusalem. Amen. Let's look at the miserable side of things. Verse 8 of Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable right. and the murderers and warmongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire, and brainstorm, which is the second death. He talks about the lake of fire. It's a very direct opposite. Not comparable. Lake of fire. Where I grew up in Botswana, they have big lakes. They have one, there's the salt pen lake. They call it Makari Kari Pen. It's a massive lake. And when you're talking about a lake, you're talking about not something tiny. It's talking about a massive area. A lake of fire. I'm not that good at cooking. But if I was to make an omelette and just get banged a bit while preparing an omelette, or a scrambled egg, you, you will scream. You will definitely scream, and you will feel the effect of fire. Not to mention when you are in the lake of fire. That's why I'm saying it's a miserable eternity. And within there, there will be no time. Because in this world, they can drop you into real fire, and you can jump out. Three seconds will feel like eternity. Three minutes in fire, having stabbed on a hot stone, will feel like I if you have been standing on that stone forever. But the Bible tells me that there is a miserable eternity where you will be there or whoever finds themselves there will be there in the lake of fire. I checked about a bit this brainstorm because we talk about fire a lot, but... The, the nearest thing that they were talking about when I was searching about was the volcano eruption. You don't get closer to a volcano. It's not a merciful environment. It doesn't compromise what stands its way. It consumes everything. That lava, that brings from that suffered that comes out of it is not, not something that you can even think twice about. It's not something that you, you will say, I'll, I'll manage it. 
volcanoes, one day I let that there is a volcano coming, erupting soon, you got to relocate. You have to run as far as possible. I'm not here to scare anyone, but I'm just here to highlight the facts of life. That some will inherit a happy eternity, while some will inherit a miserable eternity. How painful would it be when we have heard of this word of God put before us without any compromise, laid before us to make a true distinction between the two and make a choice for ourselves. What, what Wells said, he said, refusing a happy eternity implies that we are choosing a miserable eternity. By mere fact of not being saved, you are automatically saying you want to have part in the lake of fire and brainstorm. By mere fact that we are not making that step of faith to embrace the gospel, we are saying that we will spend time without limit in the fire. May God help us to make a wise decision. I work in the construction industry. We, we build buildings. And before you build anything, you have to start with the foundations. We have to start with digging the foundation. Our, our scripture, the, 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 the verse that we just read, talks about laying our foundation on the rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And he said, Therefore, whosoever heareth the saying say of mine, and doeth them, I liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Foundations are very important to buildings. Mm -hmm. Most of them, you will never see them in your life you will see a beautiful building. Yeah. You'll see the magnificence of the glass structures, the claddings and all that, but you might never see them. Because nowadays, we in the construction industry, we hold ourselves around, and for safety, you can't see when, we, when it's been dark. We have strip foundation, pile foundations, shaft foundations, those foundations are there depending on the type of soil. And also on the complexity of the structure. Some structures are high-rise buildings, some structures are low-rise buildings, but all of them need a foundation for them to stand the test of time. Um, let's open to some... 118, Psalms, Psalm 118, verse 22. Building for eternity, you have to have some foundations. Verse 22. The stone which the builders refused is become the head corner of this, the head stone of the corner. This is all time, kind of how they built before. Let's also open to First Corinthians, chapter three, verse eleven. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Right. On this journey to eternity, we need a foundation that is built on Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. The foundation that will, will not be shaken by anything. I'm reading also from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 6, which is kind of reemphasizing the same thing. First Peter chapter 2, verse 6. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion 
a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. Foundations are important, very, very important to the, to the structure because anything that you build on top will be structurally connected to the foundation. I guess one will ask, what is this foundation? Our, cre cre our three Christian experiences. Ye must be born again, the Bible says. Ye must be born again. There is no shortcut about it. There is no other way but the way of the cross. It will lead us home. Let's open to John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. There's a story about a Pharisee called Nicodemus who came to God, to Jesus by night, to inquire about this subject, that how can man be born again? How can man inherit the kingdom of God? How can man start that journey to eventually transition into eternity and spend a happy eternity with God? And the message was clear, you must be born again. And the question is to ask, are you born again? Am I born again? If it's something that you haven't tested, I recommend to you this morning that is a good experience to have. It is something that you need to build for eternity. It's a radical change. For the old things will pass away. And your perspective of life will be completely changed. Yes. You know, the desires of sin, those sinful habits that we had when we were in the world will dry out. Amen. The, 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 you, you, the, God will forgive all. Oh, yes. You'll be like a newborn baby indeed without any guilt Amen. of all the things that you, you or I might have done when I was in the world. Mm -hmm. Is your conscience pricking you this morning? Oh, Asking you whether are you saved? Oh, have you confessed that you've been saved before? Mm -hmm. Is that salvation still there? Definitely. Or you need some underpinning? Oh, you know sometimes we... We, 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 we mess about and we are not careful enough and maybe that foundation that you had has been compromised. Mm -hmm. Jesus is here. Oh, yeah. Jesus is here. Oh, yeah. We have heard from the testimony that Jesus hears. Yes. Jesus answers. Yes. Jesus is still in the business of saving souls oh, yeah. at the altars of prayer. Mm -hmm. He will radically change your life. Yeah. And you will have a testimony. No one will tell you anything. You will tell the world that I have met Jesus. That my life has changed. That peace that passes all understanding. I have it within me. And they will evidence that themselves that say, We knew him before. He is totally different. What comes out of his mouth is different. Yeah. Where he goes is different. Yeah. What he listens to is different. Yeah. Yes, because salvation has appeared. Amen. Yes, because he's a new creature in Christ. Amen. It's a lovely experience to have. I recommend you young folks. I recommend you young adults and all senior citizens, citizens in here that Jesus saves. Oh, yeah. And there is a difference about it. Amen. Amen. Sanctification of our soul is another package that solidifies our foundation. Oh, you know, he suffered without the gate, Amen. even for our sanctification. I'm quoting Hebrews chapter 13. 
verse 12. Don't stop at only salvation. It's a wonderful experience to be sanctified. Yes, the desire to sin can be removed from a man. Yes, the desire, that, that, that struggle, that struggle can be eradicated from us. That's what sanctification does. Vesta. Wherefore, Jesus, also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. It is, the provision has already been made. That's the wonderful thing about it. Yeah. Salvation provision is there. Yeah. Sanctification provision is there. Yeah. And it can be attained at the altars yeah. this morning. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to apply yourself to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a, a confession away from you. Amen. A step of faith yeah. in believing in salvation, in believing in the blood of Jesus Christ, that you can have that salvation, Amen. you can have that sanctification, Amen. and the rivers of water shall flow within you. Amen. You will have an expression to say about it that only you can comprehend, yeah. Yeah. and you will be sanctified. Amen. I thank God for saving my soul Amen. and sanctifying me. Amen. It was a wonderful experience. I was sitting in the bedroom in Botswana in my own home and I was listening to the to, to sermon by the word of God by Brabish, Joe Bishop. It was just a cassette. I was just in, in, in my room and when that experience came in, I was, oh, you know, I was so happy. Amen. Amen. I, I felt like I was flying. Some will say, don't look for flying. <laughs> Plead the blood of Jesus yeah. and you will have an experience. And you will have a way of expressing it. Amen. It will be your testimony. Amen. And no one will take it away from you. Amen. Jesus has already prayed for us that we should be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Yes. If you are sanctified this morning, you are a candidate for the Holy Ghost baptism. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, Verse 1, we read of how on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost fell down. Yeah. Yeah. Among mortal men like us, yeah. who chose to tarry? Yeah. Camp meeting is a time to tarry. Oh, yes. Camp oh, yes. meeting is a time to separate ourselves from the world. Yeah. Camp meeting is a time to face God face to face yeah. and reason with him. And the Holy Ghost and fire will fall upon oh, thee. Yeah. And you will testify that indeed I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I will just, just jump to verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Be, let me began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Right. These were the men of God who were sanctified. Yeah. And they were in one accord. Yeah. Praying, singing, worshiping God day and night. They were solidifying their foundation. Right. In the same scripture that we read, if you look it again on Luke 4, Luke chapter 6, verse 48. Verse 48, it says... He's like a man which built a house and digged deep and laid the foundation on the rock. How deep are your foundation? How rooted in Christ are you? Get those three Christian experiences you're on that way to be rooted in Christ, to have dug deep. It's not easy to dug deep into, into a rock. It's a difficult thing. Tarry. Tarry in prayer. Yeah. Have that personal experience. 
which no one can come and take it from you. Philosophy can, philosophers will come. Those who are eloquent will come. But when you have a personal testimony, no one will convince you otherwise. You will tell them that Jesus saved me. And this is the outcome of it. Jesus sanctified me. And this is where the outcomes of it. Jesus baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And this is what came out of it. You can even still dig deeper going to restitution. Correcting of the past. But some chooses to build on shallow ground or not on the true foundation. Friendship can, it can never be a, a foundation that will take you to a happy eternity. Being a member of the Apostolic Faith Church, we don't have a membership card, but being associated with the mem- Apostolic Faith Church wouldn't take you to a happy eternity. Coming over here to the camp meeting as a respect for your parents, as a respect to your colleagues, to come and spend time with your colleagues is not a foundation to to build your eternity upon. Friends will disappoint you. Family will disappoint you. Are you pursuing happiness as the basis of your foundation for eternity. Today you are up, tomorrow you are down. That's what the moments of, of, of worldly happiness will give you. But I recommend you to seek Christ oh, yeah. and be founded in Christ. Oh, yeah. For it is, he is that chief cornerstone yeah. we cannot do without. There is no way, any other way, but to invest in that foundation. Right. Once you have invested in that foundation, um, I like this verse. May it speak volumes to you. Amen. Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-eight. Luke chapter fourteen, verse twenty-eight. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sit up north, down first, and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, or finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and what was not able to finish. The reason I like this, because in my, my trade, we, I deal with cost a lot. Of course, you have feasibility budgets for construction, because they're a massive project. Before you embark on it and build anything, you have to have a budget that has been approved to build. And you go on site and start building. But on, when you are building, so many things happen. But the good thing is that is if you have already come out of the ground, you've built your, su- your substructure, the, the foundation, usually you, 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 you review your risk because there's so many uncertainty underground. You don't know what you hit. Before you, leave, you, you, you build out of the ground, you don't know what you hit. You will have so many surprises when you're doing your foundation. That's why I say if you are rooted in Christ, you have a good start. Yes. You are off the ground. Oh, yes. You have a true base to build. Amen. Amen. But you need to count the cost. Whether as you are building for eternity and as the world is moving away from the principle of Christianity, the question is, are you going to be a borderline Christian or you, are you going to be a Christian that will draw closer to God? What are you building, my brother? What are you building upon? Of course, in this journey, you will be offended of many. Of course, in this journey, you will meet some people with different characters that are born with it. 
and I'm not exonerating bad characters, no. but we will meet them along the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's what are you going to build on that foundation? Are you going to have that fruits of Christian forgiveness with you? Christians forgive and forget, yes. as the songwriters say. And also the Bible enforces us to forgive as many times as we could. Or as it happens. Not as we could, as it happens. Because how many falls will come my way will not be as many as yours. You will have your own, I will have my own. But God is saying we must forgive. For us to be ready, as we've been told on Sunday... We must have that foundation, and that foundation must be connected and have that Christian virtues. Amen. Amen. In the Bible, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 to 18, it talks about the whole armor of God. Yeah. We have to build and embrace that whole armor of God that whatever comes our way, might not shake us. We may be rooted in the principles of God. Because once you are built up, you know that you are on the way. You will be that shining house that everyone look up to, that everyone admires, that say that house has been built properly because you have the armory of God. The Bible says pray, always pray. If you want to still be connected to, those, to, the, to the foundation of our lives, if you want to be still connected to Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17 says, Pray, always pray. Pray, always pray. Christians pray. There's not two ways about it. One thing when I was preparing this sermon, came to my mind, is this about financial issues? Because of the wild world we live in, Romans 13 verse 8, he says, no, oh, no man, anything. And I was just contemplating as, as a young man growing up in, the, in, the, in this world where you can only make it if you go to university. In most cases, you can still go through apprenticeships and other ways. But by the time you graduate, you will have amassed a lot of debt. And by the time you get married, if you have gone for a, a lovely wedding or spectacular wedding, <laughs> some would have already amassed a lot of debt. But that can, can derail our journey, of, our journey this, to, to eternity. The Bible still says, oh, no man, anything. May God help us to, to, to think a lot about that. And God deliver us from all deaths. And help us to live within our means. It's easy to say. But may the Lord help us to live within our means. Because we are preparing for eternity. We don't want anything to hold us back. When we we have so many deaths, you... You, you, even sleep can go away from you. Even decisions that we're not supposed to make, you end up having to think twice about them. Yeah. Yeah. But the world that we live in is credit free. Mm-hmm. It's free, readily available. Temptations are around us. Oh, yes. But may the Lord help us Amen. to live within our means Amen. and to have that spirit of God to direct us as to what we really build on this foundation. is not eternal security. No. You can have those brilliant foundations, but if you start building things that are wrong on top of it, somehow it will crumble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somehow you, 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 you will destroy your foundation. Mm. Mm. And many buildings that have been built correctly and the have vertical cracks and shows that they have, they have succumbed to the, to, the, to, the, to the winds 
And so the F movement, they, their foundation needs underpinning. Their foundation needs another, an, to be sorted out. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what the world has hit, hit you with. I don't know what has come your way. I might not be able to enumerate everything that has come your way. Some have faced the expression hell on earth, sickness after sickness, financial difficulty after financial difficulty, joblessness, challenges with children, challenges at work, challenges with the neighbors, but we're still in joy to prepare for eternity. Irrespective of what comes your way. Irrespective of what comes to your neighbor's way. I can't say my neighbor's had it easy. I can't say so and say has had it easy. All of us were going to eternity. And we are expected to have all this done correctly. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. No man have, will have any excuse. Whatever comes your way, may God give you the enabling Amen. to stand. Amen. May God give you the strength Amen. to still look forward and say there is a happy end Amen. as a Christian. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereup thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Amen. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, st stubbles, in every man's work shall be made manifest, for the, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The Bible says that we shall be tried, there shall be inspection. It doesn't say that some will have easy go in life, some will have difficulties, but it just says they will be inspection. Yes. And through that inspection, some will be defined as gold. Some will be defined as silver. Some will be seen as precious stones because they have gone through the crucibles of life and they have come through pure without sport. Amen. The reason gold sometimes is very expensive is because it, 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 it's pure. They, they remove all the debts through fire. And when it glitters, and we will, people admire it, he hasn't gone there the cheap way. May God, as we, 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 we dream of this happy eternity, and build towards this happy eternity. May God give us the patience, the, the, the ability to withstand anything that is thrown our way. Amen. That we may be called silver indeed. Amen. That we may be precious stone. Amen. We don't want to be consumed. We don't want to come short. After many years of coming to camp meetings, after many years coming to pray, after many years waking up late at night to pray, after sacrificing a lot, all the years of our life we have denied ourselves a lot, only to be burned up when the time of inspection comes up. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Amen. We are preparing for eternity. Don't let this moment pass you by. Take it seriously. God bless you as we sing the closing prayer.
let's pray heavenly father we thank you for this wonderful day we thank you for wonderful teaching you have given us lord lord help us to build our eternity with jesus lord help us to build our foundation on jesus in jesus lord thank you for speaking through us through your man of god lord we want to see souls getting saved here lord we want to see souls getting sanctified here lord lord we want to see souls getting holy ghost baptism here lord lord help us help us to trim our lamps lord this camp meeting theme is be ready lord those who have not yet got ready help them to be ready for the rapture in jesus name i pray amen